What's going on everybody? This is Stubbs from Retro Handhelds and today we're going to be reviewing the Pi Boy XRS from Experimental Pi. This is an awesome little handheld that runs a Raspberry Pi 4B inside of it. We're going to take a look and see what we like, what we dislike. Let's dive in. All right, this review is a long time coming. I've been looking forward to getting this one out. I've been waiting about seven months for this Pi Boy, but I'm glad it's finally here. This is the sequel to the DMG model, which I was not a huge fan of, but I'm hoping that this horizontal model will change my mind, but we will see. Uh, let's take a look at the ergonomics. Ooh, that feels good. Well, I don't know about those squared off shoulder buttons. Kind of wish that was rounded, but man, the rounded side right there feels really good. With the left side though, yeah, I wish that was rounded. That's a little, it might dig into you a little bit, but all in all, not too bad. It's nice and big, comfy to grip. So far, this is more ergonomic than the Pi Boy DMG, that's for sure. Ah, uh, see, this time, Experimental Pi did more cutouts for the fan. Ah, SD card. I think we just need to connect the battery adder Pi. Good to go. All right, let's take a look at these specs. Inside the Pi Boy XRS, we have a Raspberry Pi 4B, along with the Broadcom 2711 quad-core processor. Storage, we have a micro SD card slot, 8 gigs of RAM on my Pi that I put in there. Uh, screen is a 3.5 inch IPS 640 by 480 non-OCA laminated LCD screen there. Connectivity, we have Wi-Fi 5, as well as Bluetooth 5, an Ethernet port, uh, USB-C charging, a mono speaker, and a 5600 milliamp hour battery. And for the OS, we're running a customized version of RetroPie from Experimental Pie. All right, let's go over the look and feel a bit more. So they include a screwdriver in there, which is great, the heat sink, this extra bit. But let's go ahead and get hands-on with this thing. What does it feel like? Face buttons feel really good, nice and quicky, good travel. Definitely the Game Boy style start select. D-pad, pretty loose, pretty mushy, but some nice pivot action going on there. Joysticks, while a little small, definitely are serviceable. I bet you could swap those out for something else if you liked it. L1, R1, nice and clicky. L2, R2, ooh, clicky, not the best though. Not, ooh, that L2 especially, not going in all the way. See that? R2, nice and clicky. L2, and we might wanna open that up and see if there's anything that can be done. We got USB-C on the bottom, we got a headphone port. All in all, not too bad. All right, let's add this Pi. All right, so we have our Raspberry Pi 4 here. A couple things to note. Pi Boy XRS requires a heatsink. That's good to know. Use only their heatsink, they say. And apply right there in the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. My wife helped me put this together. We thought it'd be a fun project to do together. As well as, well, she's just much better at this than me. Uh, here we are putting in the Raspberry Pi 4. It has those two lithium ion batteries on the sides. And now it's time to put everything back together. We do have a built Pi Boy. Now it's time for that vent smell. Good vent smell. What are those streaks? A little bit of light bleed. It's, 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 it's unacceptable. Ah, there's the safe shutdown feature. So it shuts itself down after a given period of time. Pulled the screen protector off. I don't think it's OCA laminated because there's specks of dust and bullshit in between, in between the glass. Is that her freaking hair? No. Still, gross dirty, bad. Now we just need an operating system. Handy dandy Samsung Evo. Heading over to the Experimental Pi website, link in our description, non-affiliate by the way, if you pick one of these up. Pick up a Pi Boy XRS image for the Pi 4B right there, and as well as the firmware and scripts, grab both of those on your desktop, unzip, run the Experimental Pi utility.exe, install these USB drivers, connect your Pi Boy up, update the firmware to the latest, say, okay, yep, we want to do that. Okay, open Bellina Etcher or your flasher of choice and grab your .image file, select your micro USB card and flash away. It asks, are you sure you want to do it? And you say, okay, dude, sure, let's do that. And we've sped up by 3000% here. Okay, and now once we have this ready, we'll go ahead and close that out and pop the SD card in the Pi Boy. All right, you're gonna to wanna to hold the menu button for two seconds to start the Pi Boy up, and then you'll be greeted by this fun little logo. It takes a little bit, so just be patient, uh, especially on first boot, it needs to expand partitions. So going to the menu there, you can do up and down for volume and left and right for brightness, as well as power off holding that menu button for two more seconds. Great, 
Uh, let's get some games on here. So go ahead and enable Wi-Fi on it and then find the network IP address. Then go ahead and navigate to it from your computer and copy all of your favorite games, legally acquired of course, over to the corresponding folders on the Pi. Then reboot the Pi so you do a fresh scan of all your games you just added. So we're in the menu, we have Final Burn Neo, N64. Let's try out some Mario Kart. And this is running really great so far. No noticeable slowdown that I'm finding. Ergonomics feel great for this type of racing game. Easy to drift around those corners. L1, R1 feels good. Oh, I was going to mention too, L2 was fixed when my wife and I opened it up, corrected it there, so that's good to know. Moving on over to GoldenEye, getting some stutters here, as I'm sure many Pi owners are familiar with. You can overclock this Pi though. The heatsink and the fan apparently handle that pretty well. I have not been overclocking it, so please take my performance footage here with a grain of salt. I bet you can get just a little bit better. Moving on to PSP, we have Untold Legends, Brotherhood of the Blade. This is running fantastic. Overall PSP performed pretty well. I'm moving over to PS1. We got some Bloody Roar 2 action here. Uh, this game's a lot of fun. Love trying this out for benchmarking. And PS1, as you'd expect, runs just fine. But let's try out both of these sticks. So next we have Ape Escape, trying out the L3 and the R3. And these are about the size of Switch sticks. Uh, they feel pretty good. Could be a little bit bigger if I had my, my way about it. But yeah. Ape Escape plays great. A final burn Neo here. We have Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, another great arcade game, and this is playing just fine. All right, let's summarize here. So our likes. I like the face buttons, uh, the joysticks, the size and the weight, uh, emulation up to PSP. Everybody who has a Pi 4 knows exactly what you can and can't do with this. With the overclocking abilities, that's great. I didn't really get into that myself, uh, but I imagine many, many tinkerers would. This is improved from the Pi Boy DMG, which I also had. I uh, was not a big fan and I did not keep it for very long. So far, this does feel better, uh, but there are things I just don't like about it, such as the overly mushy D-pad. Uh, it's way too expensive, 150 bucks for just the kit, and then you wanna add on finding and getting a Pi 4 for a decent price. I mean, you're looking at at least uh, 200, 250 bucks minimum is into this. It'd be great if they could sell them together like they did with the DMG originally. Uh, ergonomics, yeah, the right side of it feels good, but the left side just digs into your hand. I don't like that. The fan is still loud. The DMG was loud too, but this is loud as ever. Maybe just the tiniest bit improved. Speaker noise is present and annoying and frustrating. Speaker quality is pretty meh for that mono speaker. Was not impressed. Uh, the screen is not OCA laminated. It has some dust and stuff underneath. Uh, just the screen in general was very weak looking, uh, did not really enjoy that very much. A few fixes, yeah, focus on QA more, I should not have stuff under the screen when I get it from the factory. Uh, would like an OCA laminated screen while we're at it, less speaker noise, uh, a lower price, let's lower that right to 100 bucks. That would be the most ideal, considering picking up a Pi 4 is difficult. With all things considered, that gives us a final score of 7 Pies out of 14. Yes, I don't love it, but I nonetheless enjoyed playing on it. If you want to go ahead and pick one of these bad boys up, click on the link in our description, non-affiliate. Uh, it is 150 bucks currently on experimentalpi.com. Lead time is about two to three weeks if you place an order now. Uh, sourcing a Pi 4 can be difficult. I suggest eBay as a good starting point and the retro community, and you might see some secondhand ones. That's how I got mine. This has been a fun experiment. Just trying it out, you know, my wife and I got a chance to do a fun little project together. Overall, I'm pretty ho-hum on this product. Comparing it to some other similar handhelds for the price point, I just don't think it really competes. I mean, for 150 bucks, you can get a Retroid Pocket 3. Already good to go. Great ergonomics, way faster and better performance. I just don't think this really holds up in that, in that market. Uh, and it's a little chonky, and I believe a CM4 project for me. I would like more. So this sort of form factor with the CM4, smaller, less noisy, because that fan noise was driving me crazy, especially when you're playing in bed at night. Please do like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I had a great time sharing this with you all. Take care of your handhelds, everybody, and each other.